Hello friends, welcome to the seventh part of the best games of William Stenis series. In sixth part, we saw that William Stenis scored a brilliant victory against Zucker Tot in their first game of their World Chess Championship match. But after this game, what happened is that Zucker Tot won four games in a row. Yes, four games. And he was leading in the match with one to four score. But after five games which were being played in New York, the venue shifted to St. Louis. And after the venue was shifted to St. Louis, William Stenny started playing well. He started adopting his opponent's style and he scored two wins. And after eight games, the eighth game was drawn, the score was 3 to 4. Now the tension was arising. Who is going to win the ninth game? Because if Zuckertot wins, he is going to take the lead. And if Stenis wins this game, the scores will be leveled. And the psychological point of view, Stenis will be much more ahead than Zuckertot. And also one thing was that William Stenis was not only playing for the World Championship crown, he was also playing to prove his principle, which we wrote in various magazines, various news uh, papers and everywhere, that your attack should be well planned, you should play against the attack with good and uh, with all the pieces and one more thing was like he wrote even about the pawn structures the pawn formations like the isolated pawn double pawns triple pawns and all those formations he's considered in his writing and the game which we are going to see the ninth game is a very good example of how to play against the isolated pawn so without further ado let's get started with the game and try to understand what really happened in this game in this game zuckertot was was white and Stenis was black. The game started with d4, then d5 was played, c4, e6, knight to the c3, knight of 6, knight of 3, and d to c4. This is queen's gambit accepted. Here Zuckertot played e3 with the idea of playing bishop into c4 and uh, the pawn will be obviously recovered. Stain is recovered. Stain is played in a very principled manner. He plays c5, attacking the pawn on d4. After bishop into c4, c into d4, into d4, we have already arrived in a position where there is isolated pawn in the center of the board. Usually what happens is like bishop will be placed on this diagonal which is a good diagonal for white. White will be placing his knight in the center of the board with knight to the e5. Maybe this bishop on c4, uh, c1 is going to place on the g5. Well you can see that these are the chances from the white side. But what about the black side? Well black has very solid pawn structure here these four pawns are there these two pawns are there on the queen side whereas white's pawn structure is little bit bad because the pawn on d4 is potential weakness which might be very difficult to play if the position gets converted into the end game let's suppose in this position all the minor pieces are exchanged then the end game with the major pieces will be very difficult to play from the white side and strain is understood these things and one more thing is that if you can place a piece on the d5 square, which is the square in front of the isolated pawn, then your piece will not be dislodged from the square so much easily because there is no pawn on the c or e file. And that is the main point which we need to remember while playing against the isolated pawn. Well, the game continued with bishop to the e7, castles, castles, and now white played queen to the e2. Obviously, his idea is to play rook to the d1, placing the rook on the d file. Maybe other rook will also come on the e file. Or maybe he can play the rook to the c1 also. That will also be a good square for the rook. Because c or d or e file, these are the files which are good for white's rooks. Here, black played knight to the bd7. Obviously, you need to gather your pieces towards the center of the board. Obviously, knight c6 was also one of the moves. But usually knight c6 is not played because after d5, the pawn on e6 as well as the pawn uh, knight on c6 will be attacked. And also there is one threat is like knight on d7 is not going to sit there forever. He is aiming for going to the b6 and then to the d5 square. That is his plan. So here bishop d3 was played. Then obviously the d5 square is very very important as I mentioned. Knight b6 was played to get the knight to the d5 square. And here white played bishop to the f4. Obviously to put the bishop on this good diagonal. That was his idea. And strain is played knight to the d5 in this case. And then bishop is attacked. So he played bishop to the g3. And here black played queen to the e5. Vacating the important d8 square for the rook. 
that's very important and the other rook will also come in the game via rook to the c8 and here another thing is that black is putting some pressure on the c3 point you can say that the knight into c3 b into c3 queen into c3 is the threat in the air so white played rook a c1 protecting the c3 knight and here black played bishop to the d7 connecting the rooks and the black's rooks are also ready to come in the center of the board here white played knight to the e5 well here whenever the knight comes on e5 it is called as the outpost because it is protected by the pawn and another thing is that in isolated queen pawn positions the knight usually attacks the f7 pawn which is a weakness in this uh, structure and here william's tennis played rook f d8 well this move has some kind of a like a idea behind it the move is not just played just like that just to keep the rook in the center of the board it has a deeper idea the idea is like this bishop on d7 is not that well placed here on d7 the main thing is that he is going to play bishop to the e8 protecting this weakness on the f7 square and i would like to say more thing but by this time william stennis after losing initial few games started adopting to zuckertot style Zuckertot was a very attacking player and William Stennis understood his style. He what he used to do is like he used to understand what Zuckertot is going to do, where he is going to attack and before the attack started, he used to stop it. That became his psychological battle with the Zuckertot. And Zuckertot was getting very restless because he was not understanding how Stennis is going to how Stennis, Stennis is understanding his plan. and he is stopping all the plans before he is going to execute them and this was a very brilliant psychological effect which happened on zuckertot well so the game continued with queen to the f3 in this case and after queen to the f3 black played bishop to the e8 obviously to protect the pawn on f7 and there will not be any sacrifices on the f7 square here white played rook f e1 rook a c8 was played and you can say that both the sides have completed their development in this case and white played bishop to the h4 to put pressure on the e7 and everything one more thing is that white is threatening to win the pawn on d7 let's suppose here black plays something random move like a6 then knight into d5 knight into d5 bishop into e7 knight into e7 and queen into d7 is the threat just a6 move is i'm just showing to tell you the threat so here black played knight into c3 getting away from all the threats and after b into c3 the thing is that what stenis has achieved like he has now two pawns in the center of the board means black spawn white spawn on the center of the board where he can attack these two pawns are hanging pawns and they are not having any backup behind the b2 pawn is not there plus the a2 pawn is also a potential weakness in the future so here he played queen to the c7 protecting the pawn on d7 and also protecting the bishop on e7 and putting some pressure on the c file here white played queen to the d3 obviously he wants to protect uh, all the squares in the center of the board so he played queen to the d3 now knight to the d5 played as i mentioned earlier that stenis understood this thing that as many pieces as he can if he can exchange as many as pieces can then it will be much more better for black and here his opponent played bishop to the e7 and then after bishop to the e7 queen into e7 was played and he made a very big positional mistake in this position the thing is that what he did is like he played bishop into d5 thinking that after rook into d5 or e into d5 he will be having a great position his knight will be much more superior than the bishop on e8 well you can see that literally speaking like if you can see that the bishop is not that active the knight is very well placed in the center of the board that is true but the thing is that white cannot be uh, playing rook to the e3 and rook h3 immediately he needs to prepare for that attack if he goes for that attack immediately then he will not be having any kind of success and that is what stenis is going to show you now here white played c4 dislodging this rook from the d5 square rook went to the d8 square and now he played rook to the e3 obviously rook to the e3 is a little bit premature what white is trying to do is like checkmate white's black king here in this position which is not going to happen so easily here what white should have done is like he should have played rook e d1 with the idea of playing queen to the b3 c5 then 
knight to the c4 and the knight will come to the d6 square and that position will be much more superior than the position which white played in the game and the knight on d6 will also be a great pace and you can say that black will be the player who needs to play carefully in that situation obviously he did not play that he played rook to the e3 and now queen to the d6 attacking the pawn on d4 rook to the d1 supporting the pawn on d4 and here Sen is played f6 dislodging this knight from the e5 square here white played a very nice interesting move he played rook to the h3 he is offering black to capture the knight on e5 well if you capture the knight on e5 then it will be a little bit difficult position for you because after queen into h7 king to the f8 rook f3 check will be given and after bishop f7 queen h5 if queen d7 is played then obviously we can play queen h8 king d7 and queen h4 might be a draw or if you want to go for the complications then queen into g7 is also one of the ways where you can play h4 and uh, complications might happen and Stainis did not want it to do any of this thing so he played a very calm move after rook to the h3 he played h6 just protecting against all the threats and here just to let you know if knight g6 is played by white then black can play a very nice trick you can say bishop into g6 queen into g6 rook into c4 rook into h6 and now you will say that okay black is in a little bit trouble but actually not here black has a very nice move that is queen into d4 yes if queen h7 is check is given then king will go to the f8 square queen h8 check king to the f7 and if queen into d8 is played black has a very nice move that is queen into d8 yes because still there is a back rank problem in this case and he cannot really capture the queen on d8 and it will be winning position for black so knight g6 is in a way not that much good for white he played knight to the g4 and now queen to the f4 protecting against all the weaknesses which are there on the king side the knight e3 was played then what will you do yes it's time to bring your bishop in the game so he played bishop to the a4 attacking the bishop rook on d1 rook f3 was played attacking the queen queen went back to the d6 square rook to the d2 and here he played bishop to the c6 again he is putting some pressure on the rook rook g3 was played and black played f5 stopping all the threats here and also threatening his himself that he is going to play f4 and with this move you can say that black has got a good advantage because now bishop is also going to come on the e4 square and his position will be very good because the thing is that the attack which white tried to do on the king side has failed completely and now it's time for black to go for his own initiative go for his own attack on the weak pawns which are there on the d4 and c4 square here white played rook to the g6 then bishop to the e4 played queen to the b3 and now stenis played a very nice waiting move king to the h7 h7 now rook is being attacked here white played c5 and after c5 stenis saw a nice tactic you can say he played rook into c5 rook into e6 and now rook to the c1 check knight d1 was played and he played queen to the f4 all the pieces from black side are attacking on white's pieces and white is in trouble he played queen to the b2 supporting the rook on d2 but that is not going to help him because after rook to the b1 queen is not having any comfortable squares and now queen to the c3 here stain is played a very nice move he played rook to the c8 further attacking this queen on c3 obviously if you capture on c8 in this position then after queen into d8 the knight on d1 will be lost and it will be a completely lost position for white instead of that he played rook into e4 but after queen into e4 zukortot decided to resign in this game because you can see that there is a checkmate threat is there on the e1 square the queen is also being attacked and the uh, rook is sitting on this uh, back rank and black is completely dominating in this position so you can say that uh, premature attacks did not happen how to play against the isolated pawn that also was uh, proved in this game and all these things changed the psychological aspect of the match and after this zukortot never could recover from this uh, loss and he went down and uh, we can say that this was the fate changer and william stenis became the world chess champion after 20 games he won 10 games and uh, he lost 5 games but 5 games were drawn and we can say that william stenis became the first world chess champion in the history of chess i hope you enjoyed this game 
and uh, you will share like and subscribe to my channel if you are not done it do do it and one more thing is that if you want to support my channel you can donate to my channel and uh, the links are given in the description till that moment we will continue with good content thank you for watching the video see you next time thank you